Hi all, Mass Barn Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I'm here with another pretty smashed up piece of lab equipment. This is a thermostatted controlled column. Now the idea in this instrument, it is also a part of a HPLC setup, which is a high pressure liquid chromatography setup, that this can keep a liquid at a very precise temperature between some 0 to 100 degrees Celsius at 0 0.1 degree precision. So the whole front here is missing. Uh, it had a nice big blue display, as you can see in this uh, product picture I found of, found of this unit. It also has these A, B, C, D input ports for ID cards that you will insert so the machine knows what kind of sample you are running. So this is simply a tracking ID to your experiments. Now. Um, there is not much to see all around it, except the whole uh, chassis here. At the back side we can see it's a Dionex TCC 3000 SD. And come to think of it, I think actually this only went up to 80 degrees Celsius, but yeah, kind of the same um, principle inside. Seems to have some kind of power supply and some kind of heat exchanger at the front. Has a, a two ports and a USB port, so this is probably for configuration and this is for being a part of the whole setup column. So let's get all that shielding off and see what's inside. Let the let reveal the secrets of this empty space. Okay, so actually uh, has cutouts in the whole shielding here. Not quite sure if what that is for, because it has another plate on the outside, so maybe this is just some kind of uh, making it more rigid. Or maybe some kind of noise reduction, temperature, perhaps uh, some kind of insulation. Yeah, okay, seems a little weird. Just seems to be a lot of aluminium shielding. And then it has these two metal top parts here. Okay, this is still secured in place. So we have a single PCB with everything on it here. Uses a free scale FPGA or microcontroller. Has the whole power supply section for its... Oh, yeah, that's input. So it has its own little power supply section here for all the lower voltages for the CPUs has some kind of network interface here. And we can see it's from Dionix Softran, German company. Has a little beeper there. And also seems to have some kind of perhaps pressure sensor or I'm not quite sure if it's a temperature sensor then it will have to continuously continuously suck in some air. But let's see what it reveals here in the thermostat column. Okay, so we can see we have what appears to be old school SIM card style readers or just the chip cards you know from old time uh, satellite systems. And we have some kind of plastic piece here with a fan on it. Let's just get that out of the way. I must say I was hoping to find some kind of precision control Peltier elements. But uh, it seems like that this only comes with... How on... Okay. Just like that. Wow, this is getting real messy. Nice little impaps, 12 volt DC fan. Has a sample tube up to the chamber in front. We can see the whole chamber is uh, insulated in styrofoam. We have two large heat sinks sitting here. And this is a uh, supply for the motor that we saw in front. So that can just circulate the air. And other than that, it seems like there is 
No power connections of any kind. This seems almost a little too weird. Okay, we have red and black here. This looks like a power supply. Perhaps that goes to some kind of Peltier element, but that could not be that big with that small gauge wire here. So I guess I'll just have to get this torn down some more and we can find out where these leads go. And we can, before doing that, check out the power supply underneath here. It's a Meanwell SP150-24, so it's a 150 watt, 24 volt DC power supply. That's nice, that can always be reused. It felt like I dismounted the whole thing with four large screws that went all the way through the whole construction, so I assume it kind of would go <laughs> from each other now. Does not quite seem so. Okay, so one screw is maybe still stuck in there. There. And just like that, we can see we have some kind of temperature sensor sitting here at the front. This is just two heat sinks. Oh, nope, this is just two blocks of aluminium sitting here at the whole front grill, which is actually the heat exchanger because here you would have the circulating heated air going all around and you will have your hoses from your experiment. These are small liquid lines going in here and out the other way and you will then control the heating up or the at least the chamber temperature that you can heat your liquid up to. So now let's just get rid of that temperature sensor there. So that was just the heat exchanger. Here we have just a small, very simple fan. I mean, come on. That's like three custom cutouts of aluminium put on a motor. That seems a little too primitive for what I assume is a expensive product here. But maybe this is one of the cheaper versions that you can get. Because even looking at some of the plastic molds here, you can uh, see that something like the whole fan unit here that this is just a, a heated piece of sheet plastic that has been pressed out with a tool but you can even see the um, the whole machining pattern here from uh, when the tool was made you can see here where the router bit has gone across it and where the drill bit or the mill bit has gone up and down so yeah not that you need your finish on something like that, but it just shows that this has been optimized for low cost uh, production. And something is still... Seems like I have a little trouble with the Peltier element wiring being stuck somewhere. So, okay, that's because the wiring is on the other side of this metal plate. We can see they are two Peltier elements with a thermal fuse. Sits on a little PCB here, which does nothing but, yeah, make it able to put in the fuse, but 
why didn't they just solder that on the PCB instead? Quite a thick uh, element. So we can probably assume this is the hot side of it, since that's pointing towards the chamber where you want to control your temperature. Then you have your cold side, or maybe you just reverse the input voltage to the unit and you can actually run both cooling and heating, which actually must be what this unit can do. Let's see if we can get a view of that little homemade fan there. They even put the supply wire through the heatsink. Wow. Okay, that's also a dead simple and cheap motor for that. No points there. So overall quite a disappointing product. Not that the product does not work, but there's no really any exciting parts for me, except maybe the 24 volt DC power supply, two Pelty elements. But other than that, yeah. Not really much to see here. So let's take a look at the control board. Now it uses a uh, Freescale MC68332 microcontroller. Has some extra peripheral chips or RAM. It actually says SRAM out here and flash memory on the other two. So it actually seems to have Low, low byte, high byte, high byte, low byte. Okay, some kind of redundant design maybe. It has the, this little power supply, a nice dual size fuse, fuse holder there. On the back side, it had little, this little uh, plastic hose going up to the chamber itself, which were covering these two components here, which I assume is temperature and humidity, or pressure and humidity. Would not make sense to uh, have temperature going in through this, at least pressure, would, since the hose is mounted like this. But as far as a reference point being, as the end of the hose goes up here, and this was what you can call yeah, a therm thermally closed or airtight circuit. Oh wait, there's actually a port out here. Okay, so this was actually blowing air through this. So that could be the temperature and humidity sensor or pressure sensor, not quite sure, to uh, regulate the whole unit after and not the sensor we saw in front here. That's interesting, could use both. And other than that, we can also see it has a whole part of the PCB that is not populated. Same goes over here. So this really suggests that you have some kind of modular product here where you can expand it with options that is not sitting on cards, but simply how many components you put on your main board for that version that you sell. So I hope you enjoyed this chaotic teardown. Was a bit disappointing, did not contain as many parts as I hoped for, but at least we got to see what's inside a thermostated column, which is used in a HPLC setup. So until next time, see ya.